Hi, I'm Martin from Printer Potty. What I'm going to be showing you in this video is how to take apart and install a Printer Potty external waste kit like this into a Canon Mega Tank G5000 or 5050 series. This will also cover the G5020 and then the other zone variations on this. Obviously, first thing you're going to need is a Printer Potty kit. This kit contains everything you need to connect your printer and redirect the waste ink into the external tank. You will also need a whole bunch of tools, so we'll lay those out for you now. Um, pen and paper be quite useful just in case you need to make notes. There should be a pair of gloves that come with your kit, but if you haven't got them, make sure you get a pair because trust me, this is messy. Um, the ruler is going to be important to be able to uh, measure and check that everything is in the right place when it comes to drilling a hole which brings me to the drill. That is a 4.5 mil drill bit. Okay, and then beyond that, um, I have a pair of snips that are gonna help with modifying the case. A small file to file down any sharp edges so that they don't cut any of the tubing that we're installing. And in terms of um, other hand tools, you're gonna need two flathead screwdrivers or something very similar like metal shims, but you do need two. Okay, and finally a Phillips crosshead screwdriver. I've also included a pair of forceps, pair of needle nose pliers or something along those lines will just make it a bit easier to be able to fish out the tubing when you actually get to it. So that's about it. Last thing I've got obviously on the desk here is a pair of glasses because uh, I need those for when I'm looking at detail work. I've reached that age. Okay, so that's all the different tools that you're gonna need. Let's get started. You'll notice that I've actually already taken this printer apart a little bit. I'm going to put this all back together in a second, but I just wanted to show you what you were dealing with so it make it a little bit easier when it comes to removing this panel. Normally it lives like this and holds the lid down. However, these two little retaining clips um, are located approximately a centimeter in from this edge here. Okay, you're going to need to know that when it comes to levering them slightly so that they let go and you can lift this whole thing out. Okay, so about one centimeter from this top edge here and down, you're going to need to know that. Okay, right, the way this goes back in is like that. Okay, that's now all back together as you would normally receive it. There are two release points. One is located there and one, one is located there. Now, the way to get this part off is to lift this cover here, get your two flathead screwdrivers or shims, and then what you're doing is you're putting one side in this side, turn this around a little bit, put one side in this side, one side in this side, and you are levering slightly until you hear something pop. There you go, it's popped on one side, okay. Like that you get one screwdriver underneath like so that's holding it in the release position you then pop that release point there screwdriver falls out doesn't matter as long as it doesn't re-engage you're fine and then you just release this other point here just by leaning like that and then this whole thing little pinch there whole thing will come off like so next thing to do just lift your lid, clean off, and put it underneath the part there. Once you've got to this stage, you're now starting to see the innards of the printer. Um, and what we're going to do is remove the four screws in the back here using our Phillips screwdriver so that we'll be able to release the side panels in a minute. So I'm going to take those off. And you will need somewhere to put your screws. There's going to be about 12 or 13 of these. So what I tend to do, take the lid off my potty and put them in there. Okay. With those screws removed, you are then able to take your printer over to the edge and I'll explain why in a second you're going to need one 
of your flathead screwdrivers. Now, this part here is loose, but there are two retaining lugs. One of them is located here, and one of them is located here. Now, the reason I'm taking this over to the edge is because the way this panel works, it's going to release out and down. If I push down like that, against there's a little release tab just in there towards this edge. Push down, that releases one. And then if I turn it slightly and then push down again here, that releases the other one. So that's just in there. And then this whole thing comes down. It's easy to do on the edge. Down and off. And there's three um, lugs at the end here, which all go in to the front cover here. Okay, so you need to know about those. Then once you've removed that, that's great. You can put that to one side as well. This section here has a little cover. That has a couple of retaining lugs on it. Those come off, but you have to wiggle them a bit just to be able to release. I haven't worked out an easy way to actually remove these. Just keep wriggling it, and then those two bits there will release and allow you to move that out of the way. Once that's gone, you then release this side here. Now the way to remove this one, there are two marks. One you have here, and the other one is located here. Now, your immediate thought might be to try and wedge something down in there. Don't actually need to do that. What you do is you press down on the cover here and then pull out. But first, pull this one, press down into that slot, press down into that slot there, that pushes out. Once you get to there, then really push down on the inside of the case, just where that arrow is and it'll pop and release there. Once you've done that, take the printer and over to the edge again and just gently angle the printer or the panel down and it will release like that. Okay, so that's another panel. Again, place to one side. Now that you get to this point, you need to remove this cover. This sits over the top of the ribbon cable and another cable that runs into your control panel um, and protects them, but you need that out of the way. So what you do is put your, your finger under here, your thumb on top, and then prise that up and out this way. That then releases um, and you can take that off like so. With that out of the way, you are then able to remove this cover here. So what you do is just get your finger under here, pull, and then slide that over to the right, and that should be fine. Uh, quick tip to make life easy for yourself later, make sure that is in the upright position. This bit here, make sure that's in the upright position. It'll stop the case getting jammed and uh, holding it above a bit later on. Okay, so we've done that. We need to now remove this one. This one's a bit easier because it's just longer or wider rather. So you pull it up, push it away like so. And again, that'll come off. This part tends to come back over. So this being in the upright position isn't as important, but you might as well do the same just for good practice. Before I do anything else, I'm going to move all of these panels off the desk and put them somewhere safe because otherwise they get knocked about. That clears my work area a bit better and allows me to put things in different places. Next thing to do is to remove a whole bunch of screws. I'm gonna point them out individually. So the first four to remove, first four to remove are one, two, three, and then one, four. Okay, so. Worth noting, all of the screws that you remove as part of this process, they are all exactly the same color, length, and type. So you don't need to be remembering a particular screw for a particular hole. Okay. Right. Once you've removed those, the next thing to do is just carefully just slide this cable out of the way over here, um, unhook. You have a cable here, a wire that goes around there. What you do, loosen it up a little bit. Loosen it up a little bit. So it comes off there, like 
like that. Once you've done that, you can then remove the control panel and just put it to one side. Now, I'll tell you now, having done this about 15 times, um, this panel will fall off the desk, it will get in the way and all the rest of it. Keep an eye on it, try and avoid that happening. It can drive you crazy. Now that we've done that, we now need to remove all the other screws that are holding this top case on so that we can then move on to the next stage. First screw is in this hole here, down at the bottom. This is when a magnetic tip screwdriver is going to be particularly useful. Like that. There is now another screw located down in here. Okay. Next up, we have a screw just in here. And there's, I think, two more left, if memory serves. If you um, flip this up and out of the way, you will find that the screw that sits down in this hole here will be more accessible. It's just a little annoying tab that sits across in front of the screw and just makes it a bit harder. So that one's removed, close that up. Um, the last one we need to remove is located just here. Then we have these two panels here which need to come off. Those are relatively simple to remove. There is a retaining clip just here. You press that, press that in and that will release. And that then comes off. And around the other side, similar kind of deal. You have a retaining lug just in that little hole here. So again, press that in, that will release it. And that then comes off. Now that we've done that, what we need to do now is to actually open up these lids because they bridge part of the case and stop it from coming up. So you open those up temporarily. Be careful not to knock your printer or drop it because obviously it will then come spilling out if you do. Right, so we then move that around. Um, and in order to remove and pull this whole assembly up, we have two remaining lugs that we need to release. What you can do with this one here just get your flat screwdriver behind there and just lift and then this one over here same kind of thing put your screwdriver just behind and again lift <laughs> and then again lift but watch out because this thing is loose so you need to lift from here and here and then just lift the whole case away like so be careful to make sure that you've not got anything attached like these wires here or anything like that that might get damaged if you pull it too aggressively. Yeah. One bit I forgot to mention is there is a little bit of a glue dot on this cable just here. What you need to do is just pull gently down on the cable here to release that glue dot and then you can continue to lift the case away like so. Okay, now just pop this down. Oh, this bit has just come off. I'll tell you how to deal with that shortly. Um, but yeah, put the case and everything else down on the floor there. And this, it leaves you with your printer thing. Right, I'm gonna put these back down temporarily because I don't want the ink to dry, cause problems. Okay, what we're gonna do is also just put the control panel down here, out of the way, so I can turn this nice and easy. Now that we've got to this stage, and I know it all looks very scary, but now that we've got to this stage, we can identify the waste ink system. You really need to be paying attention for this part because if you're not careful, you will actually disconnect the wrong piece of tubing and you'll stop the waste ink system or the cleaning process and the pump from actually working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to identify a few key um, waste tubes that you want to watch out for. Now, first and foremost, 
This pump tube here connects via a little connector just here. That then runs through to the front via a tube. There's two tubes here. These run to what's known as a capping station or the cleaning station. So these tubes are the ones where ink will be pulled from the print head towards the pump, which is in here, okay? Um, and then circulated out. If, in case you hadn't already guessed, if they're coming to the front here, you don't wanna disconnect them. So this tube here, do not touch. The other one to watch out for, and I got caught out with this one just recently, is this one here. This one looks like it's going down. It's actually not. If you look carefully, this tube here, again, connects in and runs to a much thinner tube towards the front, runs to the front of the printer. That one, again, do not disconnect that one. Now the waste tubes that you do want to be disconnecting and redirecting out of the printer are these ones. This one, this one here is going down into a little unit that goes towards the pads at the bottom here. So you can disconnect this tube here, okay? So this one is a good one. The other one is a little bit hidden, but you might be able to see it. It's actually this one hidden down here. It's this one, okay? So what you need to be able to do is bring this one up using a pair of forceps or similar to release it. When you release it, your tube will probably come here, but this is the one you want to release. Yes, this one is a good one. This one, this one, do. Okay, right. Now that we've done that, we need to start installing part of the tubing and part of the kit that will allow us eventually to redirect the waste ink out of the printer. So grab your printer potty kit here. You will have a whole series of plastic parts, including um, a lure connector, a tube clamp, a nylon zip tie, and, and various other connectors that will help you connect into your um, printer's waste tubes. So I'm just gonna gently tip all of those out and place them with the screws because that's a nice safe space to actually put them. And you will also have two pieces in tubing. This is your external one, the longer one. The one we want for the moment is this shorter piece here. There you go, just the shorter one. This is an internal one. What we need to do is connect our single straight through barbed connector. Let's see if I can bring it in for this one. There you go, that's the single straight through barbed connector. And we're going to be attaching that to this tube here. Okay, so you grab hold of the tube, careful to stabilize it, and just push that connector on there. We then take our shorter extension here, and we plug that into the other end of that connector, like so, so it's completely on, like that. And then what we do is we take our zip tie, our thin zip tie, fold the end, fold the end like that. Just make it a little bit easier for us to push it through. And there is a, a bit of a gap just back here where you can push that through like so. Just there. So what you do is just fold, probably not quite as far along as I did, just a little bit closer. Just needs a bit of a, a right angle, right angle fold, like right angle fold like that, and then just take that around through like that, grasp hold and pull that through. And what you want to do is you want to then twist your tubing a little bit over there and then zip tie that piece of tubing loosely, emphasis on loosely, so that it will loosely hold it in position and stop it moving too far out. Just to about there. 
don't pull it much tighter than that. You don't want to be crimping your tube so that it, it's, you don't want to be doing it so that your tube is basically pinched by that, okay? We will adjust this as we go, but that will suffice to keep the whole thing more or less where we want it. Right, what you need to do then is just clip the loose end of your zip tie like that and get rid of that. With your tubing now installed like that, you now have the two ends, your other waste tube and your extension more or less in place with each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Y fitting here and plug the two Y branches into each of those tubes. That's one. Uh, oh, not got it on. There we go. And that's the other. This is fine. You're going to be able to tuck that in and out of the way later, but this is just here to help it from um, this bit here is really just to stop the whole thing flopping out and, and getting in the way when you're um, trying to put the case back on. You will get a chance to be able to push that back in and it won't cause too many problems. Okay. Right. Now that we've done that, we now need to move to modifying the case so that the waste tube is going to be able to uh, get through cleanly and reattach to the external part. I'll show you what I mean. Move that out of the way for the moment. We're now going to get the top of the case that we removed earlier. The bit we're interested in is this bit here. This is the bit that if I put this back on, coincides with an exit point here. Now there is, as you can see here, there is this notch that under normal circumstances would allow you just to be able to push the tube through and away. But as you'll see in a few minutes, the reason I'm going to be modifying this and removing a piece of this case is because when you go to put the side panel on, it has to go in a certain angle and, and things, which means that the tube can get crushed and crimped and folded and things. So chopping this piece off allows us to get the tube in the right position with a lot less hassle. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. Now for myself, what I tend to use is a pair of nice sharp offset snips. If you haven't got anything like this, you could use a little hacksaw. You can even just flex this bit here with your pliers back and forth until it breaks off. I'm just going to show you with a little bit of this that you can just flex it off like that. And as you can see, a little bit of it's come off. But I like to keep things a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to use the snips and I'm going to remove pretty much this whole corner here. Okay, so one, two, and just tidy that up a little bit. Okay. Now, Chances are that will leave a reasonably sharp edge. So what you need at this point, your file, just to clean this up. I'm just gonna file that down. Just test that with your fingers, just to make sure that there's no sharp edges, nothing that's going to pinch or cut your bit of tubing. Okay, now that that's done, we can move on to the next bit. Just pop this to one side. The next bit, we need to create an outlet hole or an exit hole in this side panel so that the tube can come out of the back here. To make it easier for you to locate the correct place to drill your hole in this side panel, we've created this sticky label template which you can use to stick to the panel end here and identify your drill point just there. Now, critical thing to note, please get a ruler and actually double check that the measurements on here match the measurements on your actual ruler. If for whatever reason they are out, you need to correct the template before you use it. Okay, so make sure you measure that dimension there and this dimension here. 
So don't assume, measure twice, cut once. Sticking it onto the actual panel is really easy. As you can see, aligning it and everything, you have top for the top here. This is uh, an image of the screw, which is just behind. Inner edge is just there. If for whatever reason you haven't received this sticky template, you can still use the information that we're providing you with to actually identify the hole. It is 60 millimeters from this side, 65 millimeters from this top edge here. That is where we are going to drill. Now you need to drill your hole into the panel. So I've got my mark. Here. It's a four and a half mil drill bit. And we're going back now. That is the hole where this bit of tubing is going to come out. That's most of the modifications done. Now we've got to put it all back together so that the tube will come out of the printer properly without it crimping, without it being caught in things or folding or anything like that. This is where it gets a bit tricky, but you've got to be patient and just take your time. What we do is take our control panel off and put it to one side and out of the way. We then get our modified cover. And what we want to do is be able to put this back on. Now, before we do that, as you remember, for me, this bit came off. You need to put it back into its slots here, otherwise you're not going to get it back in uh, later on. So before we do anything else, we're going to reinsert this. What you're going to do is basically slide this whole unit back into the little rails, guiding rails, from effectively the bottom, like this, so it goes on like that. What it does, it goes back down these rails here and here and slides back into position, okay? Like that. Before we put this back on, we have to remove, or we have to, oops, turn it again. What we have to do is lift these, okay? One, two, three, four. Now, if, as you saw me doing there, this comes loose, the way to put it back on is there are these little lugs, just line them up, it'll pretty much find its own way home, okay? And then just push that up like that. Now that we've got everything ready, in terms of the ink caps and things like that. One last thing that we need to do is put our extension tube onto this end, this Y fitting here, so that we don't lose this into the printer and out of the way, okay? So what you do is just put the extension tube on there and leave that hanging out like that. We're not done with it by any stretch of imagination, but this will just stop this from disappearing into the printer and causing us problems. You can also, at this point, just try and reorganize things so that this bit of tubing gets out of the way. For now, it will end up popping back again. Don't shove it too far back because you don't want to get into these gears here, but just pop it out of the way a little bit like that, okay? And that will make life a little bit easier for you, okay? So now I'm gonna go and get my cover and put it back on. This piece here, got my thumb on it, to stop it from sliding down. I've got my covers here out of the way. I've got this bit here is in the upright position, so it's not stopping from this coming down, sitting in its proper position. Okay, so you've got a little lug there that, that goes into, so that goes in there. You've got another little lug that goes into just there. Once you've got those in, you can close those off again. And what you need to be able to do here, you've got your extension tube here, so that's holding everything. But look what we've got here. This has flipped back. So what you need to do is just tuck that back in, like that, out of the way. That then goes in, and it's locked into there. So that's good, that's fine like that. And then this side here has got its retaining lug going in there, and that's also good. This ribbon cable has only one fold in it. If you have managed to get yourself all turned around, and your cable looks like this, what you need to do is rotate it until you end up with this configuration like this. So your ribbon cable just goes up and over and has a single fold to allow it a right angle turn. At first I thought 
these go on before this um, because they can be a bit of a pain to get on but actually it turns out this is more of a pain to get back on than these first so I'm going to put this back in position first okay so slide that into position like so like that make sure your make sure your cables and things are set up what you want to do is just run those through like so until you get down to here and that goes around that little anchor point and then you tuck it in and out of the way like so then same with this one you've just got these little bits where they go under just be careful and then because the glue has reattached itself in the wrong position pull it reasonably tight put it down to there and make sure it's tucked in there again okay make sure nothing is being caught here now we can put the ink covers back on let's go in underneath and slides in like that okay it's one and the other one again goes in underneath like that push that bit forward you have to get these little retaining clips in everything gets pushed a bit further over because of the control panel but that's all in you want your little ink um, door what you do is get this bit into this lug, lug here first like so and then pull out like that and it's on see it's then recessed there same kind of deal with this one except because this is longer it's got a bit more flex to it so it is a lot easier to put back on so go from the outside edge put it onto there and then pull this across and get it on like that and there you go we want to put our cable cover or a wire cover back into position what you do is just push in there slide into that corner and then pull out slightly here and that will then lock into position there now we need to start reinserting screws i'm going to put the control panel in first one Three. Four. That's those four. Then you have one just in here. Again, this is where having a magnetic screwdriver comes in really handy. There is another one down in here. We have one more in here. And another one is in here. Okay, as before, I flip this up because it just gets a little annoying tab out of the way and allows me to access the screw hole nice and easily. Then put that down. And the last one, aside from the side panels, is this one here. Now, as you can see, everything is set up nice and tight. I'm just going to show you everything. Right, so our waste tube is sitting back here. Um, our Y fitting is just back here. It's all well organized and ready for us to do the last couple of steps. Okay, so before I do anything else, I'm going to put this side's panel back on. Pull it over to the edge because we've got, right, what we've got is these three retaining lugs and they go in to here. Okay, you also have these retaining lugs here and here. Now they're not quite as aggressive 
as they are on the other side. Um, so they're a little bit easier to put in, okay? But what you want to be doing is sliding in with your, you want your printer sort of sitting over the edge a little bit. You want to slide your printer up and over to this position, like this. Put your lugs in from here so that they go underneath. Okay, you in? So you feel? Yeah. Okay, you can feel all of these are now pretty much in position. Yeah, and then you slide one in there. Okay, so there's no gap. There's no gap down the bottom here, so we're fine. That's then all popped back into position. All the retaining clips have um, gone back into their correct position of locked, so that's good. We now put this little cover over our input ports, so that goes in back over there like that. Now for the fun bit. If you were paying attention, you will remember that there were three retaining lugs on the panel on that side. There were also these retaining lugs here. Okay, now this is where it gets a bit interesting. So don't, don't be upset. Don't think you're in the last five minute stretch. You're not. I would allow at least another half an hour for this. And that's not to scare you. That's just to manage your expectations so that when you start losing your temper, and you may well start losing your temper, um, you have a chance to take a deep breath and go, hold on a second. He did say it was going to take a while. And it's because you have to effectively feel your way to get this in the right position and to get all the different parts to effectively dance in synchronicity um, and, and work together so that you don't pinch your tubing or fold it, you don't get tubing in the wrong place and you get this panel on properly. First and foremost, you need to thread your nice long piece of tubing through the hole that you made earlier. So it's gonna go through there like so, like that, okay? You don't need to pull it tight, you just need it on. You then bring your printer over to the edge like this and then you need to be putting these lugs that we discussed earlier they need to go in to position, okay? At the same time, this tube needs to still be out here, but you also need to get those two lugs at the bottom here underneath. Now, the way to do this is to, is basically to grab the lip of the bottom panel and gently put it underneath, pull it underneath like so. But, and this is the critical bit, but, you have got to be careful about your tubing in here. You can see the tubing is effectively coiled round in a circle, okay? That is not what you want to be happening, but it's pretty much guaranteed that that is what is going to happen if you're not careful, okay? So the way to get out of this is to, and this is very difficult to show you how to do, but what you're doing is you've got one hand, yeah, one hand, that is, is pulling everything. Gently, you're pulling this bit here, gently out so that that loop frees itself up, goes nice and straight. And then you can see, you see that little bit of white just there? That is the tube connector. That is the tube connector inside the printer, okay? Uh, and you want to be able to see that because that tells you that you've got the connector coming through and not loads of extra tubing that is also still coiled up. That, that is a good indicator. If you're not sure, take the sides off, take the side off again, um, being careful not to yank this and all the rest of it. Take it off, reset it, take another look, get a second opinion if you need to, but just take your time with this, okay? But I'm happy, based on experience of doing this, so many times now, um, that that is in the right place. Now, in case you weren't sure, the reason we modified our case on the inside and took that little corner off was because it allows you to be able to pull your tubing in this particular position without it getting caught and potentially ripping, okay? So it actually simplifies and makes the whole process a lot less hairy. Now I can put loads of extra tubing in like that. And that's more or less what you'd see. But as you can see, I just pull that out and there you go. And it's that white connector, that inner bit of white that you can see there that helps. Now, once I let go of this, yeah, you can then see 
but when I pull again, you can also see, yeah, you can also see that little bit of white, that is the connector, and that coming through is, is exactly the sign you're looking for to show you they've got it in the right position, okay? Whew. Now I know that anybody who's watching this and has already bought the kit um, may now be going, what have I done? Other people who are thinking about getting the kit are probably going, I'm not doing that, and are running scared. Now, critical thing to note, I've gone about this in a way where uh, I've tried to keep everything as tidy as possible. So I've only put a tiny little hole here, four and a half mil, that's all it really needs. Um, I've only cut off a little bit of that inner panel um, and I've made that as, as, as neat as I possibly can. You're modifying your printer, it's your printer now. You're never gonna get it repaired under warranty or anything like that. So the best thing you can do is make as many holes or as big a hole as you want to feel comfortable, okay? You can modify that inner case so that there's even more has been taken off um, so that that tubing doesn't crimp up and fold and things. Similarly, you could make like a slot in this. Um, hell, you could potentially even decide that what you want to do is cut a bit of this panel out completely so that you can see what's going on, get it all in the right position, and then I don't know, glue the bit of panel back in, put some cardboard over it or something like that, okay? It's entirely up to you, but your, this design is purely and simply there to, to give you a reference. You can do what you want to make yourself happier with it, okay? Or more comfortable. Show you one more time. So the three lugs into that position, pulling this out at the bottom and then shoving it in, pulling this down and across into position, making sure that's locked in, okay? And once we get to this point, before we start, before we start um, locking these tabs in, I'm just pulling this bit of tubing here so that it's about right, and then, come on, get in position, there you go. And that tab, that tab, sorting out this bit here, making sure I'm happy with it. Looking down into here, making sure everything's all right, pulling out the tubing as needed, getting that back into position and looking for that little white indicator on the inside. Okay, cool. You can breathe now. Um, then all you've got to do is finish putting your last four screws in to secure the panels. Now, in case you haven't guessed, the reason this particular installation is so difficult is because instead of just having a single access hatch or a single panel that you um, can drill a hole through, you've actually got to, you've got to coordinate between the inner panels and the inner case and the outer panel, um, which creates because they sandwich together, um, it creates a, a, a difficult issue. And what really, what really annoys and what really frustrates is these two, is the two retaining lugs that are in this side panel. If those two weren't there, the whole thing would be a whole lot easier. So to be brutally honest with you, if you are really struggling to get this panel on properly and you're just like, you know what, I've had enough. What I would probably do is just literally use a pair of pliers and break maybe this one or possibly both, I don't know. I'd probably say keep this one at the front on, but maybe break this one at the rear off so that it'll just push up against. And then you've got a bit more play and you haven't got this anchor point here, which is stopping you from bending the outside of the this end of the case out so that you can free up the tube and make it a bit easier. So that may be uh, an option for you to simplify the process. Yeah, you're breaking a little tab, but it's it's really not a vital one. It just holds that little panel on a bit more securely. Okay, so that's something to consider. We've now got all of the screws back in. The last thing for us to do is to get our lid and our panel back on here. Our lid, nice and easy. Best thing to do is actually put it on as if the lid was closed. 
Yeah, make sure it's in the right position by lifting the lid up. It will actually not fall over if you do that. So just put it on like that and then put it down again. Then you just put this panel back on. It'll be a lot easier to get it on than it was to get it off. So you've got these lugs here. So what you do, just angle it in like that, push down. And then what you'll find is as you push that down, push there, push there, that is now on and your lid is not coming on off at all. That's all sorted, that comes up, this is all good. So that is your printer back together. The last couple of bits that you now need to do are all printer potty related. And what you're doing is you are threading your tube clamp through the hole here at the front and there at the back. So I'll just show you that goes on through those two holes, the front and back like that. Okay, and then just pull that across. And then last thing is you grab your color connector and plug it into the open end of your tube, like so. Okay, put your lid on your potty. Um, vent always goes towards the valve and then you just connect your tank. So rotate that on, that will automatically open that valve. Make sure you haven't inadvertently clamped the tubing. Okay, just release that, good to go. And that's it, <laughs> that's it, easy, huh? Yeah, that's it. That is the entire process for fitting a printer potty to a Canon G5050. Okay, your tank needs to live next to or behind your printer on the same level. Um, other than that, it's fine, almost forgot, paper tray. So that's the actual physical tank installed. In terms of resetting the waste counter, we're gonna do a separate video for that um, using the WIC reset tool. Um, you'll need a reset key for that, which comes with the printer potty bundle anyway. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll have a separate video which shows you how to do that, but you do need to reset the waste counter to clear the error and get the printer up and running again. Just as an indicator of how much work has gone into printer potty and in particular these printer models the G5050 um well <laughs> yeah I ended up buying two of them um one of them was near damn it brand new um the other one was second hand and actually has the waste ink issue so we're going to be resetting that shortly but as you can see from here we actually looked at fitting the waste tank in a completely different way and it was actually a whole lot harder um, doing it that way. So I actually went out and bought a second printer so that I could show you again, um, but properly, how to install it. The only reason I'm highlighting this is I just wanted to demonstrate that we are determined and dedicated to actually providing as simple a process for dealing with the waste ink issues that Epson, Canon, and any other printer manufacturer creates with their printer models. Now we know that Canon have, with Mega Tank have, have produced um, maintenance box units, but the trouble is you probably already spent anywhere from 200 to 350, 450 pounds for your printer already. Um, and you're not just gonna rush out and buy a maintenance box printer just because this one's got a, a soiled nappy. We certainly hope you won't. This kit means that you can keep your investment going for, for a lot, lot longer than perhaps they were originally designed for. So yeah, I just wanted to point out what kind of an investment we made to produce this kit. We've got to sell a lot of kits to be able to cover it. There's about 450 quid's worth of just printers sitting here. Um, I don't want to think about labor, <laughs> nor mine, but yeah. It's taken a lot of time, a lot of effort. So please do support us by buying the kits um, because it'll encourage us to do a lot more of them in the future. Um, and I already have a 650, 6050 and a 7050 waiting to get the same treatment. So there you go. That is the process for installing a printer potty waste ink kit on this Canon G5050 really do hope it's been useful. I hope it hasn't put any of you off. 
I hope if anything it's made you determined to maybe watch the video through a couple more times, particularly the last bit, just to understand the nuances. Um, if you are scared at all and you're not sure and something isn't as clear as you would like it to be, please do let me know in the comments or contact us via our support details, check the description, and I will be happy to reshoot bits of this <laughs> if it really is obvious that perhaps I've missed a trick and there's some ways that I could clarify steps in this. But like I said, I really do hope this helps some of you or most of you, hell, all of you, to actually get the absolute most out of your printer and keep them going for better part of a decade, if not more. As ever, a like would be appreciated. It does help us reach more people. Comments also welcome, particularly construct mm particularly constructive feedback. Um, and if you've got any other kind of printer, um, keep an eye out because we do have a lot more videos coming, um, including the 7050 and the 6050 from the Mega Tank series. And uh, yeah, I think that's about all. But thanks for watching. I really hope it's been useful and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.